guys, how's it going? My name is John and you're watching Soul Encoded. Today we're gonna solve a leak code problem and it's pretty much one of the most uh, classic problems that you could find. And it's basically uh, how do you detect a cycle in a linked list? Now, for those of you guys who doesn't know what a linked list is, it's essentially just a node that has a pointer to the next node that has a pointer to the next node that has a pointer to the next node and so forth until there's no more nodes. It's a very common data structure that's used widely in programming and today we're going to solve one of the most common uh, problems that can occur if you are working with a linked list. So let's dive into the problem right now. So let me quickly introduce you guys to this problem. You don't have to read all of this. Uh, given a linked list, determine if it has a cycle. Now, a cycle is true. Basically, if you if you look at this like reference image right here, this three, two, zero, and minus four. Imagine if each node has this particular function uh, object declaration, which is it has a value and it also has a next value, and initially it points to null. But if they're linked together. Um, this particular node right here will be pointed to the next will be pointed to the two and then the next will be pointed to zero and then the next will be pointed to four and in this case there is a cycle because this next um, the next of this negative four points back to the number two so it goes into an infinite loop so how do we uh, detect that uh, linked list has a cycle so we could prevent the program from going into an infinite loop and then we could essentially throw an error right um, that's what that's kind of the common use case for this problem So I'm gonna show you guys the very classic way to solve this problem And that's basically using the hare and the tortoise essential uh, methodology and what what this method is you have a slow runner and you also have a fast runner and when they're running in circles imagine if um, you have a slow runner who starts the race at the same time as a fast runner and then the fast runner will um, go essentially a loop and then eventually it will pass uh, the slow runner right and what you're doing is at each step you're checking if the slow runner and the fast runner has ever met and if they have met then that means that the path that the, uh, this link list is on is a loop it, rather than a straight line with no end is with an end essentially so that's what we're gonna do the first method so let's uh, start with kind of like checking the base case which uh, uh, checking for our first edge case for all leco problems which is uh, making sure that we have like a value in our head and uh, if we don't get anything past in the parameter we'll return false because there is no cycle right now the next step I'm gonna remove these comments real quick The next step that we need to do is we need to check. Uh, we, let's assign uh, the slow variable, and let's also slot, uh, assign the fast variable to the head. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, essentially iterate over this list, but the slow will go one step at a time, and fast will go two step at a time. So, how do we do that? Let's quickly write like a while loop while. And in here, oops, while, and then we'll check here that we have a slow in the next, and then we have a fast in the next, and we also have a fast in the next dot next. So like I mentioned, we're moving two step at a time, right? So that's essentially our while loop, and this will guarantee us that we will eventually exit out unless there is a cycle. So let's check for that uh, case, right? Um, Actually, let's first move move our guys. Slow equals uh, slow dot next. Fast equals fast dot next dot next. And what this will do is essentially it will move our guy two spaces at a, uh, two nodes at a time rather than uh, the slow, which will move one node at a time. Now you might the one trick and important bit is like this while loop conditional. If you were to have not added this. Uh, in some cases, this program might break because if the uh, linked list is like essentially ends in an odd number, then at this second next, this next will be 
pointing to an undefined. So you'll essentially say, basically you'll get an error, something like undefined does ha not have a function called next. And that is what, that is why we add the fast.next.next. And this way, whether they're, whether the linked list is odd or even, it doesn't matter, our program will still uh, work as we intend. So with, with this particular state right now, this program, it will run through the code, uh, a run, it will essentially traverse the nodes and one will move at one X speed and the other one will be, the fast will be moving at two X speed. Now we need to, right, right now, as we have it, if this was like, if there was a cycle, this will go on forever. So we need to make sure we uh, have that, add that case where this will stop. So the case, as we mentioned in the beginning, is when the slow node equals to the fast node. And if this is true, then our has cycle function should return true because we have determined that, hey, these two points met, the fast is overlapping the slow, so it will return true uh, because there we have detected a cycle. Um, that's essentially uh, the first part of it. And then the last part is we return false if we reach the end. As I mentioned that for linked lists, the function like the linked list object starts by default with the null pointed as the this.next value. So if you reach the end right here, um, like this one, this is a single node, but if it points right now, this one, this dot next will point to a null. So let's give it a let's give it a go and uh, submit this guy. So it looks like this everything worked out, and I hope you guys uh, understand what's going on. If you have any questions, let me know. So let's move on to the next uh, method of solving it. Like any good programming problem, any real programming problem, there's actually many ways of solving this problem. Now, this next method. So let let's kind of delete some of this. And the next method, the way I want to solve it is, is, so what other ways can we solve this problem? Like if you think about it, what other ways can we do? So the problem essentially is that we're going through these nodes and we want to make sure that we never see another node again, right? Because if we see a node that we've already seen, then we know for a fact that there is a cycle. Right, because if there wasn't, then we would end the traversal of this linked list and we would never see uh, a single node twice. So how can we, mim how can we like check for this? Um, one way is while we're traversing, we could create a set. Now, if you guys don't know what a set is, it's just another data structure. And JavaScript um, post CS6 has like a built-in like primitive for sets. So let's take a look at refactoring this code using sets. So let's create a set called, let's just say node set, and we'll use a new class syntax and create a new set. Now essentially what a set is, it has a few properties and basically, um, classically it has like a dot has, a dot has, dot count I believe, and add and remove or delete, I forgot which. But basically those are like kind of the properties and um, one of the cool things about a set is that it guarantees uniqueness. So you can't have duplicate values, um, which is the perfect behavior that we want in this particular problem. So let's go ahead and put some of these nodes. So same thing, we'll do a while loop. And um, let's, we assigned node to uh, head to node just so that we know what we're talking about here better. And then here we'll essentially say while we have a node, while it's not pointing to node, uh, let's do the traversal part. The traversal is really easy. You just do node.next, right? And then the next thing we need to do is if uh, let's add it, to, let's check if the node set has the node that we're looking into. If it does, then let's return true because that means we uh, we detected essentially a cycle. And then the next step is let's, if that's not the case, let's make sure to add the node. If, oh, sorry, uh, node set dot add node. Okay. 
and then let me do that. I'm not a fan of how I wrote this. Um, if none of these are true and then we end the while loop, that means we could return false. So let's give that a go. Okay, looks like I have a error on, ah, I, I made a quick mistake here. Basically, I was trying to add a null value into the node set and I don't think I could do that. Um, but yeah, this is essentially it. So looking at this code, I'm basically, I created a node set and then uh, here I'm just reassigning it so I could use the word node rather than head. Um, and here I'm, I'm checking to make sure that uh, this node value is a actual value. If it's null, basically hitting this case right here, uh, if it finds, then we could exit this while loop and then hit this uh, line 25 and return false because it's not a cycle. Um, but the other case is, is as we're going through, we're checking. So set has a dot has, as I mentioned, and this returns a Boolean. If this particular node was found inside of the set, it would return true, else it, it would return false. But let's, for fun, refactor this. So what other ways can we do um, keep track of this particular, keep track of the fact that we've already seen um, an element already, right? Seen a node already. So this next way I don't really like, but I still wanna show you guys. Um, but essentially the next method that we're going to do is putting a flag onto our node uh, for every flag that we visited. Now this, the reason I'm showing you this way is because yes, it's another way of solving it and it's a pretty common use case of like you like putting flags onto the nodes that you visited in the more difficult problems and graphing problems in the future. So let's take a look of what I mean, what I meant to do that, right? So let's keep all the same code and instead of, so we're not using sets, so we can't do this. So at this current point, we have a traversal going on. And then what if we did something like this? Node um, has visited equals true. So here we're arbitrarily adding, arbitrarily adding a has visited property to our object, our node object, and we're setting that to true. So now at the same place where we were checking to see if we visited, we could say if node dot has visited equals true, then we could return true because this is doing pretty much the same thing as before, but instead of using a set, we're adding it directly to the node object. I don't really like this method because you're mutating the original object and um, that's kind of a bad thing to do in general. Um, you, don't, you, you want to keep the original parameters that are coming in um, un unaffected essentially. So let's, let's give this a go, check it. And it looks like it's passed. And yeah, that's pretty much this problem. Let's take go back to this problem so you guys can see it. So yeah, that's pretty much how to solve a linked list cycle problem. Um, you know, cycle detection it has a lot of use cases and it's uh, definitely a thing that you, you should look into. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Quickly summarizing um, this linked list problem video, there's three ways to solve it that I know of. One is using a tortoise and a hare, essentially, a slow and fast. And when the fast loops and meets, and when those two meet, that's when you know you have a cycle detection. The other way, uh, the second way is using a set. And as I mentioned, set is just another data structure uh, that has like a few guaranteed properties, one of which being that it guarantees uniqueness. So when you're iterating over your linked list, essentially traversing it, if you see a duplicate of, your, of a node that you've seen, then you know that you're, you have deter, uh, detected a cycle. So that's when you, you know, break out of the code. And then the third final way is very similar to using a set, but instead you're using a flag mutating the current node that you just visited, um, which I don't really like, as I mentioned, but that's another way to solve this problem. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this problem and I hope you guys like look into linked lists and uh, ways of traversing it and you know looking into sets and all these different type of data structures because it's extremely fun and about learning these things and yeah i hope you guys you use it in your uh, code and but yeah 
I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Hopefully it was quick. I'm trying to make these leak code problems a little bit quicker so you guys could just see it, get something uh, out of it, and then move on with your day. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.